All right, folks, welcome back to the channel. This week I'm sharing one of my favorite rounds of the season. This is Lasonia Lynx in Green Lake, Wisconsin, a Lankford and Moreau masterpiece from 1930. It's arguably one of the best deals in the country for an architecturally significant golf course. It was designed in 1930, like I said, by William Langford and Theodore Moreau, and was a crowning achievement of a lengthy portfolio of golf courses that are mostly in the Midwest. Here's what's in the bag, sponsored by Stewart and Jacoby. Using my primary hickory set for this round, five authentic irons, two replica woods, and my trusty Tom Stewart RTJ putter. And I'm using a Callaway Super Soft for my ball. I'm playing a combination of white and gold tees today. And it starts out with a par 4, 348 yards that dog legs right. So our playing partners for this round are my best bud, Tim Shaw, whom you've seen in several course vlogs already this season. And my other Wisconsin Hickory Golf bud, Brad Carando. We met earlier this year at Spring Valley Country Club, another Langford and Moreau design that you can watch on the channel. Hi, Chris. Good ball? Yeah. And there's a tee shot that's not too bad to start out a round. Brad finds himself in the rough here though, and uh, La Sonia, you definitely don't want to be in the rough, uh, especially not the fescue. Uh, you'll see why later on in this round. It's a decent shot there with the mashie, but I pulled it just a little bit into the rough here. Fortunately, used the Walter Hagen Iron Man Sand Wedge to get myself up on the green. That club is F0 swing weight, uh, off the charts on the That'll swing weight Brad. scale, but yep. nice and heavy to get through ooh, the ooh, thick go, stuff. Go, 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 go! Oh! There's a nice run at the pin from Brad out of the sand. I didn't get a chance to hit any putts on the practice green, so I was getting used to the pace of these greens as we go. Brad had him dialed in though, and he was using his handcrafted Tom Morris long nose putter that he made himself. Oh, nice putt. I like that. This is his first round with that putter. We'll talk more about that as we go as well. Moving on to number two, par four, 405 yards, another dog leg right. Starts with a blind tee shot. If you remember the 18th hole at Spring Valley, this approach into the fairway will look familiar. You've got two mounds that you want to aim through. Tim actually took the more aggressive line there with his modern clubs. I took the suggested line I that I think the design you know, I mean, wants you to take. Found myself in the middle of the fairway here and I'm using the Tad Moore replica Mills driving club and not getting along with it very well. That put me off on the right side here just outside of the bunker. I'm using the Croydon Spade Mashie to pop that up. It's my 45 degree trouble club, the waffle face. Not too bad. But again, I am not dialed into these greens at all yet. This was actually a practice round for the Wisconsin Hickory Open. So uh, it was a two day event and I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go as well. But um, basically just trying to get used to the course here is the first time that uh, all three of us were playing it. So learning as we go. All right, number three, par four. Go. Going to the bunker. Kind of want to avoid where no, Brad's short. headed there, that bunker on the right side. Fortunately, he came up short. I ended up popping this drive up, but it was okay. It was in the fairway on the left side. Felt like it was another opportunity to use the 21 degree Mills Aluminum Play Club replica from Tad Moore, but I just can't figure out how to hit this club. That put me on the right side, almost out of bounds. No, Fortunately, I was able to use my Tom Stewart Auto Hackbarth 2 iron to punch this back into play. Here's an absolutely well, gorgeous as as approach yep. by Brad with Great his shot. Nibic. Then I'm using the Hagen Iron Man again here out of the rough. Another pretty good shot here to get me up in the green. Yeah, I'm getting a little closer to figuring out the pace on these putts, too. All right, number four is the first par three, 165 yards, well protected by bunkers all the way around. See, it's an elevated green there. Good strike, just pulled it a bit. Brad ended up finding the very front bunker. 
I saw that and figured I'd try to hit it harder than I needed to, which usually leads to hitting it fat. Fortunately, it was straight ahead into the fairway, and that was a much better result using the mashie. So you see the mounding here, uh, Langford and Moreau were known for using steam shovels to move a lot of earth for their massive dramatic green complexes. Talked a little bit about that in the Spring Valley course vlog. And Lasonia just amps that up to a whole new level. Um, you'll see really dramatic green complexes throughout this golf course and uh, just makes it really fun and interesting to play. All right, number five is a par five, 475 yards. Bit of a blind tee shot here. You can't really see the fairway from the tee. Tim had a pretty good shot there. Ended up on the left side. Yeah, I did something I normally do uh, when I see that I have to really get the ball out there, and, and that's overswing. So uh, that that put me on the left side in trouble. Had a little bit of a window there. I was able to use the Tom Stewart out of Hackbarth 2 iron to punch that back into play. So you figure 150 center, or you figure 130 carry? Yeah. I'm choking up a bit on my 160 club here and trying to put it up in my stance to pop it up. Sounds like a good plan to me. Okay. That's still all right. Get up. Oh, good. Sit. Yep. Good. Great shot. Nice job. Auto Heckbarth 2 iron to the rescue once again. After that great drive from Tim, he followed it up with this beauty of a shot with his hybrid. As good as I can hit it. Yeah. Got him up on the green. Uh, I saw it bounce on the green. I don't know if it held. Brad was just short of the green, but had this approach to get himself close. Played that pretty well. So I had that line, but uh, yeah, I pretty much needed to go into the cup like with the that pace line. that I put on that. Put me off the front of the green. Let's take another look at Brad's putter. He was just hitting putts left and right to start this round out. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Long <laughs> nose is working for him. All right, number six, par four, 328 yards. This is a really cool hole, starts up high. Goes down into a valley and then comes up to another elevated green. Great. You and I are in All a right. similar spot. Yeah, yeah, Brad and I both found ourselves on the right side. Okay. He's using the Auto Hackbarth 2 iron there once again and uh, pushed it right. I was pretty comfortable with this lie to use the Croydon Spade Mashie to just pop this up onto the green. And it turned out all right. Here's yet another look at Brad's beautiful long nose putter. This is based on a Tom Morris template that's in Elmer Nahum's Practical Clubmaker book. Not sure you can still get that book, but uh, if you can, I definitely recommend you pick it up. Really great information about building 19th century play clubs from one of the masters of replica club making. All right, number seven, the signature hole on the front nine. It's a par 340 yards, and it is in fact a green built atop a box car full of sand. That's how they built the elevation on this particular hole. Pretty amazing stuff. Well, it should be safe. What'd you have for distance, Tim? 150, yeah. I had 155. So Tim ended up pulling that left past the green and there's a little bit of space behind the green where where that's okay but it's this is a tricky green to hit you know not only do you have to hit it but then there's not a lot of room up there in case your ball wants to roll out All right, that's good contact I think Brad and I were both using our mashies here and came up short so here you see the massive elevation built into this green so using the Croydon Spade Mashie to pop that up, and that actually put me over on the other side of the green. And you can see here just how hard it is to hold this green. Fortunately, the rough held me up there, but I'm just playing ping pong back and forth across this green right now, trying a different approach to putting. No, one hand is not the way to go. 
Here's one more look at Brad's putter. That was close mm, too, though. Still good, good putt. All right, number eight, par four, 315 yards. Another blind tee shot. You see the mounds there on the left. That's the safe route. If you want to be aggressive, you can try to go right. I don't have the distance, though, to do that, and I ended up in the fescue on the right side. Or at least I thought I did. Brad with a better line there over the mounds. Got himself into the fairway. Tim using the modern driver here. Had the distance to cut the corner a bit. And that was a beauty. Nice. Here I'm on the right side. Using the two iron to get this back into play. That's Just barely got it up toward the fairway. Like well. Good job for the spade mashy once again. No. From about no. 75 yards out, and that was a pretty good shot. Still can't get these putts to drop though. All right, number nine, par five, 515 yards, another dog leg right. This hole just feels long, and I made it feel a lot longer with what ended up happening next. <laughs> I don't know why I tried this club again. I it didn't have a good result the first two times. That was the worst one yet. I almost hit Brad there. Went right at his feet. So here I am in the fescue. If you think it's easy to get out of this, Please let this be exhibit A and B and C and D as to how difficult it is to get out of that stuff. All right, finally did it though. Here's the mash you're just trying to get back up toward the green. Still not quite there. Put too much on that one too. So yeah, this was a. Uh, this was a rough hole for me to close out the front nine. Oh, stop now. Yeah. Good shot though. I don't even know how many strokes I'm 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 at here at this point. <laughs> he had another good putt from Brad though. Oh, I Alright, so that'll wrap up the front nine here at Lasonia. Thanks for watching. I'll be back next week to show you the back which I think is even more fun than the front. In the meantime, make sure you check out these two videos from my archive, including the Spring Valley course vlog, which is the other Langford and Moreau course I played this year. As always, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.